Hello and welcome to another Ginger Math Petition video where this time I'm going to go through all things IGCSE coordinate geometry. So I had a few requests for this kind of video recently so I thought I'd spend a bit of time here just going through all the questions that you could see on this particular topic. Right, let's get started. So we've got a past paper question, question 8. A is the point minus 3, 5. B is the point 5, 2. And we need to find the midpoint of the line A, B. A common question that comes up, both paper 2, paper 4. In paper 4, it'd be a sub-question. And we need to find the midpoint. So the way that we do this is we're going to find the average, the mean average, of the x-coordinates and then the y-coordinates. So let's do the first part. We've got minus 3 as our x-coordinate and 5 as our x-coordinate here. So we are going to add them together. So minus 3 plus 5 and then divide by 2. Remember, to work out the mean of two numbers, you add them together and divide by how many there are. If we do that process, then minus 3 plus 5, that's equal to 2, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. So that's going to be our x-coordinate for the midpoint, and now we're going to do exactly the same process. Let's get a different color here. Let's get a nice blue, and we'll pop that in to do the same process. So we take the y-coordinates now, so we take the 5 and the 2, and we're going to find the average of those. So we're going to do 5 plus 2 divided by 2. Well, 5 plus 2 is 7, and then 7 divided by 2, again, you can check this on the calculator as well, that's going to give you 3.5. So we have our x-coordinate 1 and our y-coordinate 3.5, so then we just pop that in. Notice it is a two-mark question, so you should be showing some working for your answer. So there we are, we've got 1 and 3.5, and you get one mark for each there. Okay, on we go to a trickier question here from paper two. And a kite is drawn on a coordinate grid. The diagonals of the kite intersect at the point minus two, five. So this word intersect, we're gonna see quite a lot. It means where the two lines cross. So you're not sure about that word, then do make sure you know that. If you need to know about more other trigger words, then check out the video above. Um, one of the diagonals, and we'll draw a diagram to show what's going on here, has equation y equals 4x plus 3. Find the equation of the other diagonal of the kite in this form y equals mx plus c, which we're going to be working with quite a lot. So if I'm ever stuck with a worded question like this, I'm going to draw a diagram. So I'm going to draw what a kite looks like. Now, if we draw a kite here, again, I'm just going to draw a nice big diagram just to show you what a kite looks like, so make sure you know what these shapes are. And what the question is saying here is that if we connect up the diagonals, so let's connect up this diagonal and this diagonal, um, they cross, so this intersection point, that is at minus 2, 5. Notice as soon as you start drawing a diagram, it starts to make a lot more sense. Uh, one thing to remember about a kite, which is often forgotten about, is that these diagonals actually meet at a right angle, which is going to be very important for this particular question. Now we're told that one of the diagonals, again let's just take one as an example here, let's imagine this is the one they're talking about, again not to scale, okay this is y equals 4x plus 3, and we want to work out the equation of this line instead. Well if we have two lines that intersect at a right angle, you need to be thinking immediately this phrase here, a negative reciprocal. This is something we're going to be using a lot in this particular video. So what do I mean by this? Well, if we take this line, the gradient of this line, the steepness of it is equal to 4. So if we want to find the steepness of this line here, knowing that it's perpendicular, i.e. a right angle to the previous line, then we know that at least the first part of this equation will be equal to y equals minus a quarter x and then plus some y-intercept constant c. Now, where did this minus a quarter come from? So I've taken the 4, I've make the reciprocal of it, which is 1 over 4. So you turn it into a fraction, 1 over it. And because we want a negative reciprocal, we can put a minus in front. 
Some of you may have learned this rule here, M1, M2 is equal to minus one. Again, that also works as well because if we substitute the first gradient for four, notice we'll get M2 then is equal to minus a quarter if we solve that very small equation. So we've worked out the first part of this, which is the gradient of this particular line. And now all we need to do is work out this C, which represents the y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis. Now, the way that we do that is use the shared point from the two lines. So we're going to substitute for x first, which is minus 2, and y minus 5. This will allow us to then work out the plus C. So let's write it nice and clearly for the examiner. When x is equal to minus 2, y is equal to minus 5. And wherever I see a y, I'm going to put a minus 5. Wherever I see an x, I am going to put a minus 2. And now this is just an equation to solve. This is where we have to be nice and accurate. So first of all, we're going to do minus a quarter times minus 2, where the minus times a minus is a plus and a quarter times two is two quarters. Again, you can do this on your calculator, or a half. And so if we want to get C on its own, what's the opposite of adding a half? Well, minusing a half on both sides. That then gives us minus five and a half is equal to C. So our answer will be Y equals minus a quarter X, minus five and a half, but we don't generally write it as a mixed number. We generally write it as an improper fraction. So if we want to convert five and a half to an improper fraction, we do five times two, which is 10, add the one that gives us 11 on the top, and we keep the two the same at the bottom. This is generally a good way of keeping your straight line in terms of an improper fraction. This will help you when you get on to A level and IB. So our final answer is minus a quarter X minus 11 over two. Again, you can check your answer here. Notice this phrase here. I've talked about this in previous videos. This is or equivalent. So what that means is if you wrote, for example, Y equals, so some of you love decimals out there, uh, minus 0 0.25 X minus 5.5, for example. No, some of you work in decimals, then that's absolutely fine as well. You'll get all three marks. On to our next question, which is a paper four style question. So there's lots of subparts as we go through. Uh, the first part is a little twist on what we've seen so far. So AB is a line with midpoint M. A is the point two, three. M, so the actual midpoint now, is 12, 7, and we need to work out the coordinates of B. So imagine you've got a coordinate, 2, 3. Imagine you've got the midpoint, which is 12, 7, and then you want to work out what this point B is. So I tend to like visualizing these kind of problems. You're going to see that kind of method as we go through. So imagine I connect all these up in a nice straight line. Well, then I look to myself, well, what's the gap between 2 and 12? Well, I need to add 10. So because this is the midpoint, I need to add 10 again. And that's going to give me 12 plus 10, which is 22. And I do the same trick here. So what do I add to 3 to get to 7? Well, add 4. So I need to add 4 to that. And 7 plus 4 is equal to 11. So by drawing a diagram, you can make your life much easier with these kinds of questions. Try not to learn just formulae off by heart. Again, visualizing the problem is gonna help you in those A-level studies and IB studies afterwards. And now, from this, somehow, we need to work out that the equation of the perpendicular bisector, we're gonna see this a ton on this particular video, is this equation over here. Right, so as soon as I see perpendicular bisector, I want to get everything set up. So remember A again was 2, 3, and then B was 22, 11. So this is what we're focusing on for this particular question. Again, we've got the midpoint, which we'll come back to later on. So keep that in mind. As soon as I see perpendicular bisector, so I see that phrase, there is a three, four step procedure, which will work it out for you. The first thing that we need to do is work out the gradient, the steepness of AB. 
Now you can draw this visually. I'm going to teach you a formula on this one, which is going to make your life easier. And that is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. In other words, the change in y over the change in x. And the key thing here is not to get confused which one is which. So I tend to do a bit of highlighting here to make our life a bit easier. So if we take the 2 and the 22, so the x part of it, that's going to be our, and it doesn't matter which way round that we do this, this is going to be our x1, and that's going to be our x2. And then the 3, so let's get the highlighter out and use a different color. Yeah, let's use blue. So you've got 3 and 11. That's going to be then pen out y1 and y2. So labeling those coordinates is really, really important so you don't make mistakes in working out the gradient, the steepness of the line. So if we do this and follow this, so we get y2 is 11, y1 is 3, and then x2 is 22. I'm just being very careful here. And then x1 is 2. So if we work this out, 11 minus 3, that's equal to 8. And 22 minus 2 is equal to 20. And you should always simplify your fractions when you get the chance. Notice 4 goes into both here. So we're practicing other skills from the course. So we're going to divide top and bottom by 4 to get a simplified fraction. 8 divided by 4, that's equal to 2. 20 divided by 4, how many 4s in 20? That's going to give you 5. So the first step is to work out the gradient. Now, step two would normally be to work out the midpoint, but we already have that in the question, which is very useful. So I'm going to write it down again. So our midpoint here is 12, 7. We'll come back to that in a moment. Step three is a step that we've already seen in the previous question. Because we're looking for the perpendicular at right angles, bisector, we want again that negative reciprocal. Again, you're going to hear that phrase a lot. This is slightly different to the previous question because our gradient, what we need to do, because we already have a fraction, is we're going to flip that fraction and then turn it negative. So we're going to take the two fifths, we're going to flip the fraction, so that gives us five over two, and then make it negative. So that gives us the gradient of the perpendicular bisector. So what that means is that y is equal to minus 5 over 2x plus c. Very similar to how we did that kite question earlier. Now, because we've got a bisector, it wants to go through the middle. It wants to split the line into two equal parts. Therefore, we know that the perpendicular bisector and the original line, they share this midpoint 12, 7. So we can substitute that in to work out the c. So let's do that over here. So when x is equal to 12, because that's the x part here, then y is equal to 7. We pop that in, so we get 7. So I'm just copying this equation. Wherever I see a y, I put a 7. And wherever I see an x, I'm going to put a 12. And now it's a case of making c the subject. So if we do this part here, you can do this without a calculator as well. Well, notice that you can actually cancel here. So 12 divided by 2 is equal to 6. Minus 6, so minus 5 times 6 is equal to minus 30. And therefore, if we want to work out c on its own, what's the opposite of minus 30? Well, adding 30 on both sides. That gives us then 37 is equal to to C. So our answer in y equals mx plus c form is going to be y equals minus 5 over 2x plus 37. Now you might think that's the answer at this point, but notice they want it written in this kind of strange way over here. So we have to do a little bit of massaging to get it in the form that they want. So let's create a little bit of room for ourselves. So we've got plenty of space to do this. So I'm just going to copy this across. So minus y equals minus 5 over 2x plus 37. Again, I like to call this massaging, just massaging it. So we get it looking like the box here. 
Now, the first thing I notice is we actually have a 2y, not a single y. So the first thing that comes to mind is, let's just multiply everything by 2. Because that's going to guarantee us that we get 2y, because 2 times y is 2y. Uh, the times 2, well, that's going to cancel with the 2 down the bottom. That gives us minus 5x. And don't forget to multiply this 37 by 2 as well. 37 times 2, do it on your calculator, is 74. And suddenly, we get something very, very similar to the box. But we just need to do one tiny thing here, which is bring the uh, x over to the other side. So what's the opposite of minus 5x? Well, plus 5x on both sides. That's going to give us 2y plus 5x is equal to, well, that cancels. So we get 74. And it's a great feeling in the exam when this happens, because you know by getting to the correct answer here, you have guaranteed all four marks for this particular question. And remember, this is a paper four question. So it's going to continue as we go through. So just to remind us, the perpendicular bisector, so I'm going to put PB, is what we just worked out. So 2y plus 5x is equal to 74. Super. So the perpendicular bisector of AB passes through the point N. The point N has the coordinates 2 comma N. Find the value of N. So we're given the X coordinate here. So we're told the X coordinates and it wants us to work out the Y coordinate. So when X is equal to 2, we're going to copy out what we've just done. Wherever we see an X, we're going to put a 2 and then solve. So we get 2y plus 5 lots of 2 equal to 74. Um, and now we just need to work through the algebra. So we have 2y plus, well, 5 times 2 is 10 is equal to 74. And when you get to this stage, it's nice and relaxing getting through to y. So we're going to minus 10 from both sides. Again, the opposite operations here. That gives us, this cancels, 2y is equal to 64. And then the opposite of times in by 2 is dividing by 2. That's going to give us then y is equal to half of 64, which is equal to 32. So a one mark question. Again, if you can get to the answer directly without showing that working, that is absolutely fine as well. Right, so now we've got, again, slightly different question. They do this often on paper fours. You know, the first part, A, B, C, will be quite straightforward, but then D will be a little twist on what you've seen on the course. And points A, M, and N, they form a triangle, and you need to work out the area of the triangle. Whenever you get a problem like this, and you're like, I'm not sure where to start with it, draw a diagram. Doesn't have to be the scale in the slightest. So let's go through our points. So A is 2, 3. So I'm just going to write down these points. M we worked out before, didn't we? It's 12, 7. And then N is equal to 2, 32. First thing I notice here is that the X coordinates are the same for A and N, which is going to be very useful a bit later on. So let's draw a diagram here that looks reasonably accurate. Again, it doesn't have to be to scale in the slightest, but to give us a good idea of what's going on. So A is 2, 3, so that's going to be somewhere here. N, notice, is 2, 32, so it's on the same horizontal line, just way over here. And then M is going to be 12, so in the middle somewhere, not exactly in the middle, that doesn't matter, and then th further up. So, ah, other way around. So we've got 2, 32, so let's do this again. So the x coordinates are the same, and it's the y that differs. So we've got n way up here, and then we've got 12, which is over here, and then 7, which lies yeah, closer to this point, but again, it doesn't really matter. So we get a triangle. What's crucial here, and the first thing I notice in this question, so this is a, this is n, this is m, um, this is a straight line upwards, which is going to make our life a lot easier actually calculating the area. Remember, the area of a triangle is the base, so this is going to be our base in this case, multiplied by the perpendicular height divided by 2. So let's work out these things. So our base is going to be the difference between 3 and 32, so that's going to be 29. This perpendicular height of it, 
Well, it's going to go from 2, and it's going to go all the way to 12. So that's going to be 10. And that's all we need here. So in order to work out the area of the triangle, we're going to do a half, 29 times 10. So again, we can do that on the calculator if you so wish. We can do a half of 290. Don't need a calculator though, that's going to be 145. So our final answer, again, it's all about drawing a diagram that makes sense. It's going to be 145. Notice there are no units in this particular question. So you don't have to put a square centimeters or square meters. Again, the diagram is really helpful here and spotting that two of the points share the same X or even Y coordinate would also work in the same way. That means that you can form a very easy equation then to solve to work out the area of the triangle. Okay, so you can check your answers here. Again, it's a very bizarre method that you could have used um, for part D, but I think drawing the diagram, visualizing, using that knowledge you've got from the course is a much easier method. On to our next question, which is question 10. Again, this is very, very typical. There's a reason I'm going through these questions a lot, and that's because it comes up a ton, so make sure you know it. Okay, so question 10, A is the point 111, B is the point 45, and we want the equation of the perpendicular bisector. It's that phrase again of AB. And this time we want it in this sort of standard form of Y equals MX plus C. So first step is that gradient of AB. So we're going to do exactly the same method as we did before. Remember the formula. So Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Label those coordinates. So this is going to be X1 and Y1. This will be x2 and y2, and then just substituting carefully, being consistent. So we're going to get 5 minus 11 divided by 4 minus 1. 5 minus 11, that's equal to minus 6. And 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. And minus 6 divided by 3 is equal to minus 2. So that's the gradient of the line segment here, A. B, our second step, which it worked out for us last time, but this time we're actually going to have to work it out for ourselves, is the midpoint of AB. But we've done practice on this already. So if we look at our coordinates, so 111 and 4, 5, well, we want to find the average of the x coordinates. So that's 1 plus 4 divided by 2. And if we do 1 plus 4 divided by 2, again, we can put this in decimals and fractions. I prefer fractions, so we're going to keep it as 5 over 2. So our midpoint is then 5 over 2. And then we do the same with the y component. So we have 11 plus 5, 16, divided by 2 is equal to 8. So this is the calculation I'm doing here. 11 plus 5, 16, divided by 2 is equal to 8. We will come back to that in a moment. Now, step three, again, I pause the video at this point. Can you remember that two word phrase that always comes up here in order to work out the gradient of that perpendicular bisector? It is the negative reciprocal. I'm going to write it again because it's such an important phrase. You see it again and again and again. So in this case, the gradient of our perpendicular bisector, we take this. So we flip it, so make it a fraction, so 1 over 2. And then we change the sign. So it starts at minus, so this time it's going to be plus. That means then we can write the equation generally as y equals a half x plus c. And now we're going to substitute in that midpoint that we worked out before to work out that c. So when x is equal to 5 over 2, y is equal. To 8. So wherever I see a y, I'm going to put an 8. 8 equals 1 half x 5 over 2 plus c. And now just tidying up then to get what c is here. So we've got 8, 5 over 2 times a half, be careful you're timing fractions, is equal to 5 over 4 plus c. And then what's the opposite of adding 5 quarters? Well, we're going to minus 5 quarters from both sides. Now, of course, if this is a non a non calculator question, you have to work this out manually. If it's a calculator, of course, you can use it. 
Um, and this will leave us with, I think, 6 and 3 quarters is equal to C. Um, but again, we prefer to write this as a improper fraction. So that gives us then 27 over 4. If forgotten how to do that, then remember it's 6 times 4 here, which is 24, plus 3, that gives you 27. So our final answer will be Y equals a half X plus and then 27 over 4 for all five marks. This is a standard process. If you want to do well on this topic, you must be able to work out the equation of a perpendicular bisector. There'll be twists and things afterwards, but this is a standard skill. You get this, you're going to get those five marks. It could make the difference between B and A grade or A and A star. So you can see the answer there. You can see where you pick up all those method marks. Notice, work out the gradient, one method mark. Midpoint, one method mark. The perpendicular gradient, one method mark. So even if you get some things wrong through this particular question, you can pick up three marks by remembering those steps as you go through. If this video has been useful to you so far, please do like the video. That means it can spread to as many IGCSE students as possible so they can be up to speed on this really, really important topic. Okay, let's continue. So we're on to question three here. So a line L joins point F and point E. G. And this is something we haven't seen so far. We want to work out the length of line L. Again, if we're not sure what's going on with this kind of question, then drawing a diagram is always quite useful. So if I draw a quick diagram here, F is equal to 3, 2, so 3 along and 2 upwards, so F is 3, 2. G is minus 5, 4, so minus 5 along and 4 upwards, so we get a point G here which is minus 5, 4. If I connect this up, we want to work out the length of the line. And the way that we do this is by forming a right angle triangle. So I drop a perpendicular, which be amazed how often that happens in mathematics, uh, dropping a perpendicular. Not dropping the B, you're dropping a perpendicular. So if we work this out then, we've got 3 here as our x coordinate and minus 5 as our x coordinate here. What's the difference between 3 and minus 5? Well, that's equal to 8, yeah? Imagine it's 3 degrees, you need to get 8 degrees colder to get to minus 5. Likewise, if we look at the 2 here and the 4, what do we do to 2 to get to 4? Well, we add 2. And as soon as you see a right angle triangle with lengths and looking for the hypotenuse, you should be thinking Pythagoras. Now, what is Pythagoras? It's that thing, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, I'm sure. It's now coming back to you. What I would recommend here is just to get through to the answer directly. So remembering we've got, to got the two small sides here, all we have to do is the square root of these two sides uh, squared and added together. So writing this is enough working to get those two method marks. Now, if you put this into the calculator, which I'm going to do now, we can then generate the answer. Okay, so hopefully you've got your calculator ready. Again, I'm taking the CG50 here, but again, any calculator will do for this particular video. So all I'm going to do is go shift and go 2 squared plus 8 squared, enter. I get 2 root 17 here, which is the exact answer, which is kind of useful. But sometimes you actually want an estimate of that particular answer as well. So you click the SD button and that will give you the decimal. Generally, unless they ask for an exact value, they do want that decimal there. So 8.246. So let's pop that down. 8.246. And generally, the standard here is either rounding to two decimal places or three significant figures. Uh, in this case, both are exactly the same here. So we get 8.25. So that gives us then our full three marks for that question. And look at that next question. I told you this comes up a ton. Find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of line L in the form y equals mx plus c. You're probably going to get bored of this kind of question, but that's absolutely fine because you've got lots of practice on it. When it comes up, you get all five marks. So step one, I will speed through this, the gradient of, in this case, FG, so we use the right letters. Remember that Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Again, labeling our coordinates, so X1, Y1, X2, 
uh, y2. So if we pop this in properly, we get 4 minus 2 over minus 5 minus 3. That's going to give us then 2 over minus 8. Kind of looks ugly, but again, we can tidy this up because this simplifies to 1 over 4. And we can bring the minus up. That's not a problem. So we've got the gradient of the perpendicular bisector, which is minus a quarter. This time, again, we're going to have to work at the midpoint ourselves of FG, so that halfway between the X and the Y coordinates. So let's have a think here. We've got 3 and minus 5. What's halfway? Well, we add them together. So 3 minus 5 divided by 2. That gives us minus 2 over 2, which is minus 1. That's nice. And then halfway between 2 and 4, I think we can see it's going to be 3. Again, 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Again, hope you remembered this phrase. I'm going to mention this a ton in this video, as I said, which is the negative reciprocal. Yes, it's back again. Like a bad terminator, it is back. So negative reciprocal. Again, we flip that fraction. So we're going to get 4 over 1, or just 4. And then we change the minus to a plus. So this is going to be plus 4. That means the equation can be written as y equals 4x plus c. And now we use that midpoint, that step two, to then work out the C. So when X is equal to minus one, Y is equal to three. So you get three is equal to four lots of minus one plus C. Probably getting the hang of it here. Four times minus one is minus four. And then what's the opposite of minus four? Well, we need to add four on both sides. So that's going to give C as 7. If that's a little bit quick in terms of going through that question, then do look at the previous two examples. That goes through it a little bit more carefully and a bit more slowly. So that gives us the final answer for five marks here. It's a ton of marks. 4x plus 7. And we have our answer. Okay, and on to point C. I told you they like to put a little twist on these kinds of questions as we go through. So a point H lies on the y-axis, that's useful to know, such that the distance GH is equal to 13 units. Find the coordinates of the two possible positions of H. Okay, interesting question. Again, as soon as I see an interesting question like this, I'm going to be drawing a diagram. So we need point G here. So G is minus 5, 4. So let's just draw a diagram here. Y and X. And we've got minus 5, 4. So minus 5 along and 4 upwards. So up here somewhere, again, doesn't matter what our scale is. And the distance is 13 units from a point on the y-axis. So if I emphasize this, uh, on the y-axis, it's going to be over here. So we're looking for this point H, which is going to be on here. First thing that comes to mind, I'm going to extend this slightly here, is that we're looking for a point, And notice there's a symmetry involved. So it could be either this point up here, or it could be this point down here as well because that's essentially an isosceles triangle that I've made here. These two sides are the same. So let's zoom in on this part here. So I've got my G here, which is minus five, four. And I've got my point up here, which again, I know what the X coordinate is. So let's call it H, so it's gonna be zero, but I don't know what this is gonna be. So let's give it a letter, let's call it S for my first name. So I'm going to connect this up like so. Uh, we're told that the distance of the line is equal to 13. So we know the length of this is equal to 13. We can drop a perpendicular just like we've done before for the very first question here and pop a right angle on. And now we just need to work out the lengths of these. So this is minus five, this has to be five. And if this is S and this is four, now it could be either above the line or below the line. I'm gonna assume it's above the line for the moment, but again, we've got that mirror image here. So this here is just gonna be S minus four. Yeah, so whatever this value is and then minus the four, okay, to give us this. And then we can just use Pythagoras. So if we look at Pythagoras, remember it says 
a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Therefore, using it for this tri um, triangle, we get 5 squared plus s minus 4 squared is equal to 13 squared. Now, we could expand everything out here and solve the quadratic. That is not a problem. But I want to use a little bit, oh, gets yes, nicht. Uh, um, a bit of common sense here to actually work out what to do. So the 5 and 13, as soon as that comes to mind, I think of a Pythagorean triple. So this 5, 12, 13 is quite a common relationship with Pythagoras. So if I draw a triangle here, this is 5, this is 12, and this is 13. Then this has to be a right angle triangle. So with that in mind, this here in the bracket has to be equal to 12 or minus 12, because if you square minus 12, you get 144. So from this, s minus 4 needs to be either 12 or s minus 4 is equal to minus 12, because we're going to square it and it's going to become positive anyway. So that means then s must be equal to 16, because we just add 4 on both sides, or s here, because we're going to add 4 to both sides, is equal to negative 8. That's a very sneaky way of being able to work out the answers quite quickly. Again, you can always take that equation, expand everything, solve it, and get your two answers for S. That's absolutely fine. But this is a very neat way of doing it, exploiting this fact that we know the 5, 12, 13 Pythagorean triple. So we've got our final answers here. We've got uh, 0 minus 8. Remember, we knew that the X value was 0 and then 0 16. It'll be interesting to see how the mark scheme goes about uh, explaining this, but I think I see 513, I know 12 is related to that because so of 51213, and then using that idea. So, uh, interesting here, um, let's have a look at the alternative methods. Yep, notice they've gone down the quadratic method down here, but they've used this kind of idea for the very first method here to work out 0 minus 8 and 0 16. OK, on to our next question with a little bit of vectors in there as well, which is always good to revise. So A is coordinates minus 2, 7, 1 minus 5 for B, and C is 5, 4. And we want the midpoint, yet again, of A, B. OK, so we need to be a little bit careful here. So we're just concentrating on these two coordinates. So we look at the X components. We find the average, so minus 2 plus 1 divided by 2. That gives us minus one over two, that's minus a half. And then we look at the uh, y coordinates, so we're looking at the seven and the minus five, so we do seven minus five, add them together, divide by two, that gives us one. So we get minus a half and one for our midpoint. And now we need to find the vector AC, so that's interesting that we need to find the vector. Again, I tend to just draw a diagram here Again, particularly if you get an unusual question or one you're not expecting, drawing a diagram always helps. So we've got minus 2, 7, so minus 2 along and 7 upwards. So there is our A value. Uh, C is 5, 4, so we've got 5 along and 4 over here, which is less than 7. I'm trying to keep it roughly in line. OK. And remember, all to do a vector or a column vector here is we just need to work out how much we go downwards, and how much we go acrosswards. So we're going from um, A to C. Probably should draw it this way around instead. Remember, the top value represents left and right. The bottom value represents up and down. So we're going from minus 2 to 5. So what do I add to minus 2 to get to 5? Well, I do minus 2 plus something is equal to 5, so that needs to be 7. And then what do I do to 7 to get to 4? Well, that's going to be equal to minus 3. Remember, I'm going downwards, so it's going to be a negative. So just be careful with that. And now I need to work out this thing here. So if you're not sure about these lines, again, check out my vectors video. That's really useful for this particular topic. But this wants you to work out the magnitude of the vector. So as soon as you see those lines, you need to be thinking something we've already done on this video, which is Pythagoras. So we need to use Pythagoras on our answer over here. Again, we can do that in one very smooth calculation. So we're just going to do Pythagoras and 
go 7 squared plus minus 3 squared, similar to questions that we've seen before. And at this point, I'll just get the calculator to do the rest. Now, one thing to watch out for, so as I type this in, is when you've got that minus 3, make sure you put it in brackets, okay? Otherwise, that's going to have a big effect on exactly what's going to happen. So you need to give your calculator that right guidance to get you to the right answer. Again, it's going to give you that exact value, root 58, but generally on the course, they want you to have a decimal. So we get 7.6157. Let's write that down, 7.6157, dot, dot, dot. Again, that rounding to two decimal places or three significant figures. So that's going to be approximately 7.62, which we're going to pop over there. Yes, and there are more parts of the question. Again, this is a typical paper four question. So we want to find the equation of the line AB. Give your answer in the form of y equals mx plus c. So uh, the first thing we need to do here, let's just write down what a is, which is minus 2, 7. b is equal to 1 minus 5. Double check. Yep, all good. So as soon as I see equation of line, we need to work out the gradients then of a, b. Again, those same skills over and over again. Nick, make sure you revise them. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And label those coordinates. So we have x1, y1, x2, y2. And if you pop that in, we get minus 5, minus 7 over x, which is 1, minus, minus 2. Careful, we've got those two minuses there. Minus 5, minus 7, that's equal to minus 12. 1, minus, minus 2, that's going to be equal to positive 3. Be very careful there. Two minuses next to each other here. Uh, make a plus. 1 plus 2 is 3. Minus 12 divided by 3, that's equal to minus 4. So that's going to be the gradient of the line. So we can write it as y equals minus 4x plus c. Now, because we want the equation of this specific line, notice both of these coordinates are on that line. So we can substitute either of them into the equation to work out the full equation of this line. So it doesn't matter which one we choose. I'm going to choose A because first in the alphabet. So when x is minus 2, y is 7. Let's pop it in, see what we get. So 7 is equal to minus 4, lots of minus 2, plus c. So minus 4 times minus 2. Be really, really careful here. Again, two minuses make a plus when multiplying. So we get 8 plus c. And then what's the opposite of adding 8? Well, minusing 8 from both sides. That's going to give us then c, and 7 minus 8 is equal to minus 1. So the equation of the line is equal to y equals minus 4x minus 1. Notice I could have put coordinate b into the equation of the line, and it will give me exactly the same answer for c as minus 1. And there is another part of the question, something you should be very familiar with at this point in the video. The equation of the line perpendicular to AB. So we've seen that before, but now a little twist that passes through C. So if we go back, C is equal to 5, 4. We're going to be using that later on. So if we take the perpendicular gradient... That's going to be equal to that negative reciprocal. It's back. <laughs> oh, okay, you're going to know that word by the end of this video for sure. So perpendicular gradient. So we've got a gradient of minus 4 here for AB. So we need to flip that. So we're going to turn it to 1 over 4. And then we're going to change the minus to a plus. Therefore, the equation of the perpendicular to uh, AB is y equals 1 quarter x plus c. And this is why it's a slightly trickier question, because it passes through c, i.e. no midpoint in this case. Even though we worked out a midpoint, minus half 1, we are not using that to work out c. We're using the 5, 4 from the question. So when x is equal to 5, y is equal to 4, that means we get 4 is equal to 1 quarter lots of 5 plus C. That gives us 4 equals 5 quarters.
quarters plus C. Therefore, if we minus 5 quarters from both sides, this cancels, so we get what we want, which is C. 4 minus 5 quarters, that's going to be equal to 2 and 3 quarters. But we don't like writing it that way, so we're going to write it again using that mixed number, the improper fraction. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 is 11, so 11 over 4. So our answer here will be 1 quarter x plus 11 over 4. Notice they want it written in this y equals mx plus c form, so we've got it exactly how they like for the three marks. Okay, and there are the mark scheme for you, so you can have a look through and make sure you're happy with that and pause the video if you need to. And one thing to be aware of is the examiner's report. I haven't really talked about this much in recent videos. So what you should do is when you've gone through a question, like question eight, just like we've gone through, again, you can read this here in your own time, is spotting where typical mistakes are being made by students. Okay, so notice the biggest uh, mistakes made by students in this particular question is finding the correct gradient for the perpendicular line. So going between that plus four and minus a quarter, that was a common error. And as I said previously in the video, working out that C, many just used either A, B, or the midpoint, not C, which it actually indicated in the question. So at that top end, the A and A star, reading that question, making sure you're not making those typical mistakes that other students make, means you'll get to that A star grade or A grade instead. Right, on to our next question. And if you like this kind of content, then please do subscribe to the channel because I do tons of IGCSE content for you to make revising for those exams a little bit easier. So on we go. A is the point minus 2 minus 3, and B is 0.49. And we want to work out the length of AB. We've already seen a question like this. Again, I'm going to draw another sketch. If you don't need the sketch, that's absolutely fine. But again, it's nice to visualize. So we have minus 2, minus 3. So that's down here. We have B, which is 4, 9, which is up here somewhere. And we want to work out the length of this line. So remember the way that we do this. We're going to drop a perpendicular. Again, I've done that drop beat joke already. So I'm not going to do it again. And we need to work out the lengths of these. So we want to go from minus 2 to plus 4, well, that's going to be 6, minus 2 plus 6 gives you 4. What do you do to minus 3 to get to 9? Well, we're going to add 12, minus 3 plus 12 gives you 9. And again, we can use our favorite friend here, Pythagoras. So to work out the length here, we're going to do a smooth uh, Pythagoras calculation, 6 squared plus 12 squared, and let the calculator do the rest. So calculator, all it's done really in this particular video is just do Pythagoras over and over again. So we've got 6 squared, there's our square button, 12 squared, press enter. Again, we get it in that root form of 6 root 5, but we can change it to a decimal, giving us 13.416. So let's write that down. Again, I always write down decent float, I have a few decimal places. And then I round to our final answer, which is 13.4 to one decimal place or three significant figures. Usually I indicate as well, if it's not clear what you should round to, I'm going to indicate it's three significant figures here. On to the next question. Yes, yes, again, it is a perpendicular bisector question. Now, honestly, I have just chosen random questions from the last couple of years of papers. And this comes up again and again and again. So let's speed through this. So for A, B, so we've got minus 2, minus 3. See if you can race me for it at home. So first step, gradient of A, B. This is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So we've got 9 minus minus 3 over X2, which is 4 minus minus 2. That's going to give us 12. Be careful with negative numbers. And then we've got 6 at the bottom. That's going to give us 2. Nice. Then part 2 is the midpoint, which we don't have yet. So midpoint of A, B. So halfway between them. So if we take this here, halfway between minus 2 and 4, 
4 minus 2 is 2, divided by 2 is 1, and then minus 3 and 9, that's 6, divided by 2 is 3. Again, just double check. That seems fine to me. Good. This next part is our negative reciprocal, negative rec, they see. I'm going to simplify it down. So we take our 2, we flip it, give us a half, change it to a negative. Therefore, it's y equals minus a half x plus c. To work out c here, we have a perpendicular bisector, important word, that we're going to use the midpoint. So when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 3, 3 is equal to minus a half plus c, so c is equal to 3 and a half, but we don't like it written that way, we like it written as 7 over 2, 3 times 2 plus 1, therefore our answer will be y equals minus a half x plus 7 over 2. When you see these questions, you get a really good buzz because you know, I know exactly what to do here. Gradient, midpoint, negative reciprocal. If you work on these skills, you can do it as fast as this as well and be accurate at the same time. There is another part to the question that we haven't seen. This is why I've included it in here. So C is a point on AB. C divides AB in the ratio 2 to 1. We haven't really seen this kind of question so far. Find the coordinates of C. So if we go back, we've already drawn a diagram here and we want to make sure that we've done this correctly. So A, B in the ratio to 1. So that means a point, so let's just call this C. We don't know what C is at this point, but it divides it into, so this part of the line is 2 thirds. Remember the ratio to 1 here. So this is 2 thirds of the line, and this is going to be 1 third of the line. So with that in mind, I've looked at these numbers of 12 and 6. That's what comes to mind to working with it. So I'm going to start at A here. And if I look at the 6, I'm using what I've already done here. I'm going to work out 2 thirds of 6. Well, that's equal to 4. I'm going to work out 2 thirds of 12. And that's equal to 8. And all I'm going to do here is just add that 4 and 8 to these particular coordinates here. So I go two thirds up the line. Minus two plus four, so I'm adding four here, that's gonna give me C being two. Minus three plus eight, well that's gonna be equal to five. So this point here is gonna be equal to two five. Does it look like two five? You should always do a double uh, common sense check here. It kind of makes sense, yeah? So two along five up. So it fits the sketch that we did, and therefore you can check you're getting roughly the right answer. So our final answer here, just for two marks, is equal to 2, 5. If you want to update the or vectors knowledge, so we talked about vectors very briefly in this particular video, check out the video right in front of you. It's going to help you work on that particular topic and fill in all those gaps so you're ready for those IGCSE exams.